So I, the, the draft is Thursday. And you obviously have a tremendous player, uh, Chet Holmgren. And it's interesting because when I look at drafts, Mark, I always look at comps. And I'm like, well, he, he can dribble. He, he Like KD, I mean, you've coached KD at the Olympics. He's not KD, maybe the scorer, but he's got some skills. He's uniquely skilled for his size. Um, is it Dirk Nowitzki? Is it KD? What is your what what is your comp? Is there a professional comp to him? Gosh, Colin, I, I don't know if there is a comp to him. I mean, he he is he is really really unique in so many aspects. Uh, as you mentioned, he's incredibly uh, skilled. Uh, got a great feel for the game. Uh, just has that great ability to take the ball off the off the backboard and lead a break and uh, either he can pull up from three or he can, he can take it all the way to the rack or he can create for others. Uh, the interesting thing about him and, and, and talking with a lot of the GMs and, and coaches is uh, he is really, really, really tough. I mean, he is physically tough, even though maybe his body doesn't, uh, you know, belie that <laughs> and look like it really, really tough. He doesn't shy away from physicality uh, and, and extremely uh, uh, mentally tough. He's got a, a belief in himself and, and a conviction in, in uh, what he can do. And, and uh, um, he was a great teammate too. I mean, we all, you know, we all knew what he was going to be here for a short period of time. And he was just a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, uh, teammate to everybody. You know, Mark, in basketball today, it, it, not that it's completely positionless, but if you were to use him at the professional level, and again, you've bridged that gap. You've coached college. You've coached with Coach K and, and Greg Popovich at the Olympic level. How do you use him? How would you use him as a professional player? Because you've, you've, you've coached both. I mean, I would do, uh, I, again, I, those guys are as good as they get in the coaching world. They, they'll, they'll figure it out. But uh, obviously, what, the, the same way we did at Gonzaga, we, we put the ball in his uh, hands in a, in a myriad of places. Uh, like I said, in transition or space in the floor. Um, he also, his numbers around the basket finishing were uh, exceptional, putting him down at the dunker spot. Uh, and he, 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 he worked extremely well with uh, uh, Drew Timmy. Uh, and, uh, and obviously, you know, you can put him in the corner and space at the three because I think he'll end up being a, a guy who shoots over 40% from three. Wow. And then, Colin, we haven't even talked about the other end of the floor is probably where he's at his best. I mean, from day one, he's going to go in and alter shots. And if he's not blocking them, uh, he's changing them. And, and what I came to find, if he's not changing them, he's literally deterring people from even running plays around the rim. <laughs> they don't right. even uh, uh, try. And so, unbelievably gifted uh, on the defensive end. It, it, I just watched his ball handling. I can't believe how fluid. You know, there's the old story about Anthony Davis, that Anthony Davis for years and years was a guard, and then he grew like seven inches in a year so he could handle the ball. I don't know Chet's backstory. Apparently, I, I just, I'm just kind of blown away at his ball handling. I, I, were you blown it, it, away? Uh, I mean, I, I, the backstory is he, he basically grew up in the same uh, – uh, program is Jalen Suggs, a great guard we had last year. Yeah, who's with the Orlando Magic now, and and Jalen's dad uh, was saw him and was the coach of that team and grabbed him and and basically coached him like a guard. Yeah, and 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 brought him up to to, to handle it and and uh, and and to shoot it and to, and to do things that guards do. And then you know he and Jalen and Jalen was kind of like his big brother and and. That, that's kind of that's basically the the development piece, and, and we were blessed enough to get them both uh, at GU, and and uh, he's just a very 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 unique uh, 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 entity. I mean, obviously, people have questions about his uh, strength. I, uh, I I I don't worry about that because he's not. There's not one ounce of him that's soft. Yeah, and uh, and and he's incredibly durable. I don't know that he spent more than 10 minutes in our training room this entire year. <laughs> so that, 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 in this day and age, that, that's, that's pretty impressive too. You know, it, it's interesting, Mark, you've been doing this long enough where, um, you know, I used to worry about one and done kids coming in and boy, they're not, they can't even drink at the hotel. 
And then you see Anthony Edwards and John Morant. And they're, boy, they just feel like they come into the league and they, they're on social and they're funny and they, Anthony Edwards is in a movie. And I used to worry about, I'm like, what do these guys do at the team hotel? Go to their room and hide? They can't go to anywhere with the, the other teammates. Have you seen kids grow emotionally in your time that they're just ready for the professional ranks? They're ready to play. They're ready for marketing. You've obviously... With NIL, you take in transfers. You, these kids now are more mobile. Your kids travel more. My kids are on planes more going. Do you think kids now are more ready than ever to be pros? I, I do in in all those aspects uh, that you just uh, mentioned. There, you know, and again, think about. It. I mean, Chet's played in so, he played in so many big games before he got to Gonzaga. Uh, you know, these big giant recruiting showcase things. He, and he obviously played for uh, uh, Team USA uh, on the under uh, 18s. And and, uh, uh, and, and so he, he's been on big stages and, 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 and been a focal point of everybody. Everybody's talking about him uh, being a, a number one pick. Um, and, 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 and they are. They're, they're more prepared for all those things that, that pop out there. But I would also add that because of all that, you know, there's an incredible amount of pressure on these these guys, and I think what we're seeing across the board in all realms of athletics is, you know, people are having problems processing that with some some mental, uh, yes, you know, just processing it. And we actually spend a lot of time with that at at GU, and and again, like I said with Chet, I mean, he's he's incredibly uh, uh, mentally strong, and and. And, and really, really focused. You know, I, I find uh, kind of what you were alluding to, Colin, these guys are really focused on their career at, at a lot earlier stage than you and I were, I think. Yeah, yeah, Eastern Washington. <laughs> I was having too much fun. To <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and fo- exactly. Hey, focus on it. Hey, I want to ask you about um, you have always, you're ahead on this. You are always, you're comfortable with guys leaving after a year. You've always taken transfers is that a lot of coaches have struggled with transfer portals and the NIL. Now, I, I, I have said this. I'm for it. But I do think for the integrity of the season that in football, you shouldn't be able to transfer from Labor Day to the end yeah. of the season. Uh, even the NBA right. has a trading deadline. Um, and I do worry about the NIL. You know, nobody makes money and one kid makes all of it. You have always put your arms around transferring and player empowerment. What scares you going ahead with any of this? You know what? You and I are exactly on the same page. I think the the concepts are great. Uh, The problem is uh, implementing those and and not letting the the bad parts of human nature uh, uh, take over. You know, transfers, we ought to be able to allow them to transfer, but, I mean, we we have – leagues and we have teams and we have to be, be organized enough to be able to finalize our rosters at a certain time. We can't have guys just jumping from team to team and not really knowing what, what a team or a roster is going to look like. Uh, so we've got to get that a little more uh, uh, under control. And then, you know, with the NIL, the NIL is great on the surface if it's truly just name, image, and likeness. But the problem is now it's 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 not it, people and and fan bases and things like that have have turned it more into pay for play now where it has nothing to do with name image likeness and it just is it, it has the threat to turn into just just basically buying players. Yeah. So you know we we need to get our arms and hands and everything around it. We we have great input from everybody in the sporting world, but the problem is it's well intentioned but a little bit misinformed. Yeah. And I think we need to get back to listening to those of us in the profession for kind of getting it back under control, making it a positive. All right. Jay Wright retired. Coach K retired. You're not retiring anytime soon, are you? What are you going to do? Keep coaching. I hope not. Yeah. Why, have you heard something? (laughs) (laughs) Just just want to make sure you're around. I woke up today feeling pretty good, but I don't know. Maybe you'll tell me after this. Uh, Mark Few, Gonzaga, uh, congrats on getting uh, Malachi Smith in your program. That's going to be a great find. I know the Arkansas loss hurt, but they were a good club, and we'll talk soon. Have a great summer in Spokane. Uh, You got it, Colin. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.